the trade problem. Oh boy. Hey guys, Paul Strong here. And today let's talk about the recent TF team drama. I'm going to give you a very short synopsis. I will talk about the problems that I have with the current way that we interact with trading. And at the end, I also want to go into some solutions that I think GG could implement basically next league immediately that could already alleviate around about 90-ish percent of the reliance on something like TFT. Now, if you're not as much of a DJ as me or some of the people in my community, I totally get that. Sun is shining outside. I have my vitamin D pills here. I'm fine. But the reason I want to talk about this is because it actually has an impact on the game. Usually when it comes to drama, I leave myself out of it because it revolves around people's egos. It revolves around stuff that I don't understand. There is always context missing inside those DMs. But when it comes to TFT, this is of public interest. And while some of you guys have kind of stopped using it or kind of like didn't track how big this- This is the Discord server, right? Discord grew. Over the last yeah. years, this has grown to having 500,000 members. Now, if you've Half never used TFT, TFT is a private Discord just 500,000 people, no biggie. Not a big deal. That is basically used for bulk trading. It is used for mirror services and is also used for other services, for example, Ashley. What TFT sure. has been over the last few years is the same thing that Trade used to be back in the day. If you guys don't know, Trade was basically a website where people I trade. Use, I use PoE Trade even whenever they made the official site better. Like I, I liked PoE, I, I like PoE Trade more than the official site. It was almost a carbon copy of what yeah. GG made afterwards. But what it was is a trading website because GG did not want yeah. to make a trading website. It took them years to actually implement one of their own. So some community members took it into their own hand. And it took some RMT ads on the website that as far as I know, the owner wasn't really responsible for. You can't really pick and choose your ads all that well. But what probably happened with that situation, uh, I know a little bit about the way that Google AdSense works is that the same problem you guys ever notice on youtube where like you know there's you watch a warcraft video and there's like an ad for warcraft gold the problem really is that google doesn't do due diligence in terms of vetting their advertisements they don't like they and, and it's 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 embarrassing it's a scam and at a certain point i i think that i think google should be liable for it because like they're literally promoting something as a partner for them that they didn't even vet at all like i i think that it's honestly they're literally promoting fucking scams like joe rogan man i really like this supplement guys i can't wait to buy more of this did you know the government hasn't given you your 700 dollars? send 600 dollars to this address and they'll send you your 700 dollars like, it's fucking AI Joe Rogan selling fake supplements that are going to probably give you gonorrhea. But it just gets put up there. And so the same thing happened with Path of Exile. Because Path of Exile, as a website, sets themselves up as a, uh, as a Google-like affiliated site. And by doing that, they have, like, different kind of keywords that they use, like... Path of Exile, video games, North America, English, um, you know, like ages, you know, 18 to like 40. And like, that's probably the most people that are playing PoE. And so like then people that are selling PoE ads sell those ads and they plug into those exact uh, those exact different like uh, keywords. And then the ads just appear there naturally. So it probably was not the intention of of poe trade to have ads for rmt and it was just an unfortunate outcome of google's lack of quality control of their ad services that's what my assumption is i could be wrong but i've seen this happen a lot what i understand from is it had to come to a certain point of outrage for gg to actually do something about that and i think that bubble might be about to burst for tft as well and what a ton of people use here is the bulk selling section mm -hmm. the biggest one probably being something like compasses just stuff that you cannot really bulk sell on the official trade website. Yeah. Also very important, for example, beasts. Now for certain things, it is more valuable than other things. Some things are just very niche or already get kind of covered by the trading website, but not perfectly. Yeah. But there are some things where just you save so much time, it is incredible, especially with something like compasses recently. And also the introduction of PoE Stack, which is sort of like a trading tool connected with TFT, where basically you can look up all the things that- I'm sorry, I'm gonna have a really unpopular opinion here. I think that they should make all of these trading currencies on an auction house in PoE. I think the 
trading of currency and poe is just fucking terrible the experience is horrible it's not fun it, it, it it's just bad like everything about it is bad like i i like it's just it's it's so fun like you try to buy one divine orb and it's like you take two maps of time to just buy a divine orb like i i value tremendously the marketplace and poe but i think that selling currency and selling items are two different things and i think that if they sold currency on an auction house i would i would like that sorry because it's just this is this is horrible this is it's it's just bad gameplay posted on tft and you can have it in this website style, which is a lot easier to get through. Now, this website also has another part, which I'm not part of, which is the so-called Mirror Mafia, where people basically mm -hmm. just have uh, a ton of mirrored items and they get serviced out to other people, just make it more convenient. It sort of is a monopoly on that, although people try to break it. So a Mirror Monopoly, these are, I, these are weapons and items that the rolls on it are so perfect and so good that the most expensive currency in the game creates a duplicate of any item in the game. So what people do is they use this expensive currency called a mirror to duplicate these items. So then people find the original item because you can't duplicate a duplicate, but you can duplicate an original multiple times, right? So you can go from one to two and one to three, but you can't go from two to three, if that makes sense. So they buy up all these items, and then they have a monopoly over the mirror service, which is what it's referred to as mirror service. Usually people don't even have to pay money. They don't even have to buy the mirror, but they also have to pay a premium on top of that, which is the mirror service. It, yada, yada, yada. It's a long story. When it comes to the Sounds mirror really item... stupid. No, it's not stupid. It works perfectly. PoE is one of the best designed games ever. And although I think the currency trading system is bad, it is the greatest ARPG that has ever been made. Community, I'm just not equipped to adequately represent them. There's a lot of other people who can do that way better than I can. But just know that there is a ton of in-game currency to be made. And obviously, the accusations of RMT have been overwhelming. A little more on well, that. Of course, they're RMTing. Of course, most people that are playing really high end in a game that has trading are probably RMTing a hundred percent later. But let's start with how this all began. Now, as far as I know, this is where this all started with a certain person having a that which was taken jewel up for mm -hmm. a certain price, but they got messaged by Jinebu, which is one of the owners of TFT. And I was Jibu. I was like, oh, fuck, what's he getting into now? They don't necessarily agree with their antics or they didn't like the person. I don't know the personal history of them. And this person didn't want to sell to Jinebu. So whatever is the history there or he didn't want to get spammed, I have no idea. But they basically knew each other or he knew of Jinebu. And um, yeah, so just kind of escalated and both sides were kind of unhinged. It's all fine. There's more There's more stuff to be found here, obviously. But that is where it all started. And what happened is Jinebu banned that person. Now... Moving forward, as fast as we can, we come to the Armageddon event, which was TFT banning local identity. Now, as far as I know, local identity criticized that sort of behavior, that sort of banning, as a lot of us did over the uh, last couple of months. And if you don't know, TFT is very ban friendly. Now, local identity is the creator of POB Fork. They should be ban friendly because you can't always enforce like trading ethics. So anybody who's behaving in a way that's sus, I would just automatically ban them. Because a person who's behaving in good faith will never make you uncomfortable or make you feel weird. Like, absolutely. Like, I, I actually agree with that. Now, obviously, they shouldn't ban people because of some sort of personal drama or vendetta. Like, that's fucking stupid. But, like, banning people for being weird or for you know, trying something that's like a little bit under the table. Ah, uh, nah, bro. Like, uh, nah, nah, nah. Like, I would just kick him out. Which they is a just beloved bullshit. community yeah, figure. That's different. So you have one of the most beloved people in the community, which makes uh, the program that I spent more time on than in PoE itself. And on the other Path hand, the you building. have a, let's just say, 
trading Discord with not the best reputation. Local Identity criticizes for stuff like this and gets instantly banned and posted wow. to Twitter and the landmine explodes. On top of that, one of the problems is that immediately Jenebu went to be personal about this and called him garbage, which he did later apologize for, but it is a pattern at this point. It is not just a single occurrence. One small thing I want to point out that oh, I just cannot me. get out of my head. So you have Jenebu, who probably does like thousands of trades every day. For all I know, this guy like oh, no, trades while dog. he sleeps and he bans somebody for relisting an item for more. And he says that's bannable. I have not had, I think, a Yeah, and this is the problem, right? Is that... Because, like... You start getting into these, like, really granular, like, value... It's like, is up pricing and, like, you know, trying to price fix, is this against the rules? In my opinion, I don't think it is. I don't think it should be. Price fixing seems totally fine. Because that's the free market, and the game is a free market. If the developers don't want you to price fix, then they should change the game. Then just change the way the game works. Single day in this game, without trying to whisper somebody... Remember, and the developer is God. Anything that the players do is because the developer allows them to do it. And the developer has created the world in which that action occurs. Any bad action that a player takes inside of a game is the result of a developer. Them immediately relisting it for more. So to think that this guy who does thousands of trades more per day than me, this should be like second nature for him. So I have no yeah. idea how this even started in the first place. Sure, the guy was rude and all of that. But as a trader, you should expect that as well. You can't just ban everybody. As a trader, you're somebody who interacts with other people. You're going to get shit on all the time. That is sure. just kind of like a normal thing. Now... What happens from here? Well, it's the typical Streisand effect where you try to conceal something and people are just going to get more and more interested about what's going on. And a small thing turns into something crazy. Local identity gets banned. People like the Drama Cat and QDoc see the dollar signs and it's on. And from here, we basically have everybody sharing their negative stories about TFT. Jesus. Yada, yada, yada. I could sit here forever. And I'm sure somebody is going to take this topic and make a documentary about it. But that is all you need to know as a normal consumer. So what is the problem with this? Huey has a lot of need for third-party websites. It's a very complex game. So where GGG cannot deliver, people in the community will. Now, there are some yeah. sectors where... Things like what just happened isn't that big of a deal, right? It doesn't really affect you. If the Craft of Exile guy or the PoE Ninja guy all of a sudden went rogue or something, nothing would really happen. Somebody would take their place or we would lose some information tool, right? That's what this is. Information, sure. PoE Wiki, Craft of Exile, PoE Ninja, Awaken PoE Trade. It could kind of be utility, but whatever. That's true. I mean, like, we haven't always had Awaken PoE Trade. Like, remember we used to use the old one that was like the white background and it was just like a notepad document? Like, I remember using that back in, like, Harbinger League and shit. Those kind of things are important. They're so good to have, but they are not going to ever negatively impact your game. Same with the second category, which is utility, which, for example, would be PUB or Filter Blade. These things can give you upsides, but cannot really ever diminish your gaming experience, right? You have sure. PUB, which is, I mean, I don't even know how you would play the game. It would be so much testing involved it's so hard to compare builds without it it's a great tool i don't know what we would do without it but if we didn't have it it wouldn't make the game worse from its base state same is true with filter blade now, in terms of ggg getting involved in policing any of these websites when it comes to information i mean they do make an effort with pure wiki sometimes they do probably work together with some of these people but in general well, they haven't really needed to because the truth is that the poe community is generally really well behaved and there's been no need for grinding gear games to try to crack down on anything because the guys that run pob the guys that run the wiki the guys that run you know like never sync they're really cool and i feel like they deliver a great service and there's not a lot of drama i would say that's pretty true it's just never really been an issue this is just a nice upgrade to the game. It's just very nice to have. Yeah. When it comes to utility, these are actually even more important because as I said, being able to make your builds with complex math, it's a big time saver. The game is sure. very complex. Putting all of that into one place is huge. Same with Filter Blade because the filter that is provided by GGG is just so outrageously bad that 
it just makes stuff like this very important. And for people who don't want to go into the editor, like just the fact that it's not on a website just made it way more accessible to yeah, people. Filter, but I, I use in filter general, mode. they would not have to police this if they didn't want to because it doesn't make the game worse per se. Now let's go yeah. to trade. And I know that most people trade with PoE stack, but that is basically TFT because it pulls from TFT. It just makes things a lot easier. If PoE stack was a standalone, that would be, I mean, great. And maybe we're going to see that in the future. Who knows? But when it comes to trade, TFT is the bulk of it. I cannot stress this enough. 500,000 people. This is something that concerns most people. It is not just mirror crafters. It is not just the mirror mafia that people are talking about. It is just the whole trading economy at stake. Now, some of the people in these communities are so terminally online that, for example, people like me would look normal next to. <laughs> and that is okay, right? But there are some people in there that are really socially inept and there are egos involved. All those things do not, okay. I do not care. I do not care about any of this. But when it affects the game, I do. Once this ego stuff affects my enjoyment of the game, I will cry to GGG like a little bit. Now, believe it or not, yeah. but when it comes to the player base in GGG, mostly our goals are aligned, which is making a good game. We have different reasons for it. For us, it's because we want to play it. And for them, it's because they want to make money. Obviously, they also want to make a great game. They want to have something to show off for. They want sure. to feel good about it. They want to have feedback. But at the end of the day, it's also a vehicle to make money, obviously. But underneath that, GGG wants to honestly just make a good game for everybody. And that's what we want as well. Now, obviously, there is always going to be friction because GG wants to sell you stuff, for example, stash tabs. So they won't sure. make it too easy that you can hoard stuff in your stash. They want to incentivize you to spend money. They will make your characters look like shit, right? You have a bucket on your head, so you buy a cosmetics. Sure. But overall, sure. I can safely say I trust in GG to have a good vision of the game and to make good changes on average. Sure, sometimes there's problems, but we just poke them and over time it will go away. But when it comes to TFT and the player base, our goals are not aligned. Now, we're going to... Well, not it, it's... The reality is that if you have a massive trading website, this is a thing that WoW went through recently. So do you remember about two years ago, whenever there were all of these like um, almost like confederations of like gold sellers and carries like these like Gowie Wix marketplace and like all of these other websites that were about like paying people gold through like all of these different places? Yeah, confederates. I mean, kind of right. I mean, this. Yeah, well, they lost this war, too, because Blizzard fucking banned them. And so what happened is, yeah, Blizzard shut them the fuck down. And they were like, listen, we don't want people doing this in the game. This is bad for the game. The people that are running these websites or running these discords and these websites are fucking RMTing like crazy. They're making tens of thousands of dollars. And this is making the game worse. So, yeah, it's, it's still work. Oh, yeah, of course, still people do it, but like it's a lot harder to do it. It's against the rules. And so it's like, it's like 5% of what it was. And so the problem is, is you know, functionally kind of solved, at least from Blizzard's perspective. The, the reality is that there is a tremendous financial incentive for a person who is an RM tier or who has a vested financial interest in trading in this game being a certain way to be in charge of a trading discord. And this creates a massive conflict of interest that fundamentally hurts the users in a way that, for example, Path of Building, it doesn't work that way. Like Filter Blade, it doesn't work that way because you don't have that same type of conflict of interest where you have a person who is like, if you're an RMT -er, you want to own the trading websites, right? Because then you can stack the deck in your favor. So that's why it becomes problematic. And again, the truth is that I can blame these people. These people are pieces of shit, yeah, for sure. But it's grinding your games. It's their responsibility to solve this problem. Because they've created it. This problem has occurred because of the way that their game is designed. It's not like this happened out of nowhere. Like, there's not a game... There's not a system like this for Fall Guys... <laughs> There's not a system like this for Diablo. I mean, probably kind of a little bit, but not really. But there is for PoE because the game is it's designed that way. And so you have to either change the design of the game or stop the people that are exploiting the design. Because if you don't do either one of those things, what you're really doing is you're throwing in the towel and telling like authentic, real, good 
law-abiding players that we don't care enough about your experience to 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 improve it you're basically letting letting the average just like good player like not good as like good at the game but like just good like behaving well you're you're hurting them and you're just giving up on them not even talk about all Imagine the RMT accusations right, that have been yeah. coming out over the years. Obviously, there's a lot more drama preceding this. If you think this is like a one-off, it's definitely not. But what do we want? They care about having the trading experience in a place where they can control it. And I don't want to be unfair here. There's a lot of guilt to exactly. do this. There is a lot of people. But we'll once again go to this number right here. This is just the biggest culprit out of all of them. And this is where... And there will be always be rot. Like, you have to understand that, like, even if people make a new trading discord, there will be problems in the new trading discord. It's like, why does the government keep attracting tyrants? Because tyrants want to be in charge of the government. It'll just keep happening. Like, this will always keep happening. So the only way to solve this problem is for Grinding Gear Games to control it or... For there to be a system of accountability. But this will always happen. It becomes a problem. And just to be clear, I'm talking about TFT in terms of management and as an entity and less about the individual people. I know there's going to be good people in there. Some people deeply care about the game. And it is oh, the, unfortunate. The, the majority of the people that are probably part of this Discord are good, you know, good, authentic players that are not trying to fuck up the game. As usual, it is a handful of bad actors that poison the entire well. That's really the truth. That everybody will get put into the same category. And yeah, this is where yeah. you sometimes have to say something and bring it to people's attention. You don't have to build a new trading discord. You don't have to take it into their own hands. You just have to like, do this to GG and tell them there's something happening. And with GGG, when it comes to these personal disputes, which yeah. in this case, it's not even personal anymore. This is a systematic problem. But when it comes to GGG, rightfully so, they ignore 99% of this stuff, as they should. Personal disputes sure. are completely bullshit. Like, why would they Why would they talk? Oh, somebody got scammed in a boss carry. How does that affect GGG? You got into a contract with a guy you shouldn't have trusted. Okay. It's to be fair, I think if somebody scams a boss carry, they should be banned. I'll say it. They're a bad actor. Ban bad actors. Like it's not even a, like it's not even a question. You're scamming. Ban scammers. What? GGG doesn't ban them though? Yeah, I'm I, I'm not saying if they do or don't. I'm saying if they should or shouldn't. I think they should. Socks, right? That guy is a scumbag. But I mean you can send GG uh, like a, a message. Okay, cool. But they're not going to intervene, right? That mm -hmm. is a personal thing. But when it comes to these kind of things, at a certain point, there's going to be a threshold where the temperature gets too high and GG is actually going to respond. Is that time now? I have no idea. I just know that over the last few years, we have been basically just ignoring what's going on. These things have... I really trust the people that work at GGG to understand what the real root of this problem is. And I think that they have demonstrated in the past that they have the proper level of insight in game design to do that. And I'm going to give you an example. Do you remember back in like, I, I don't know, like uh, Metamorphosis League or like somewhere around then when almost every video that you would see is somebody using a flask macro and like all the comments would be people talking about it. And then everybody in the comments using flask macros and everybody had flask macros for everything because it was just better because hitting all five flasks at the same time was fucking annoying. Well, grinding gear games, what they did is they effectively created flask macros as a mechanic for the game with instilling orbs. So, like, instead of trying to fight against an obvious, like, so the players are trying to overcome bad game design. And so, Grinding Gear Games, like, very 500 IQ of them, instead of just, like, punishing players for overcoming bad game design, they fixed the game design so it no longer had to be overcome. I don't think the solution to this is kicking people out of this trading discord i think the solution to this is changing the foundation in which trading works 
Now, is this something that they can do overnight? No. It's probably something that they'll have to do over a year. But I think that the more that this problem, like the more that the game matures, the more this problem will emerge. And this is a problem that will only grow in time. And so I, 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 I trust them to make the right decision. And I don't know if any of us, because who could have thought about the idea of instilling orbs before they had them? A lot of people weren't really talking about that as much. Most people just wanted the one button that you could press that would do all your flasks. So it's like the old Henry Ford quote. If I had asked people what they wanted, they wouldn't have asked for a car. They would have asked for a faster horse. So again, like I trust them to make the right decision, but they do need to do something about this. Always happened. There's always some stuff going on with TFT. POE and we just put it on the side. It. I hope Why? So. Because of convenience. Because as customers, we mostly care about convenience. And I don't think that is necessarily a problem. Sure, we could have said something earlier. We did, but it wasn't outrage enough yet and honestly i think this is something that point. is on gg to fix i don't think they should completely ignore this even as a company now at this point i quickly want to talk about the crafting community and their involvement here mm -hmm. and especially people servicing mirror items that are yeah. very much interested in tft getting broken up some people obviously involved but a lot of people on the outside are kind of looking in and thinking this is a problem now a lot of people say this is not an issue because it only really involves the top 0.1%. And while that is true, yeah. this league has seen a lot more people engaging with mirrored items. There's a ton of people who tell me they just mirrored the first item. They just found uh, the... Because the, 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 the currency trading is so big now. Like, I, I've seen more currency this league than any other... I, I actually cannot think of a league that I've seen more currency in. This is the biggest currency league that I've ever seen. First mirror and stuff like that. Um... But on top of that, you have to understand that these people are probably among the most dedicated players. They have the most play hours, which basically yeah. makes them powerful, unpaid marketing agents. Unpaid in this case, sure, if they make content right on YouTube, but it doesn't cost GG a dime. These are the people who start communities, who have people coming back two months into the league because they know certain other people in their guild. Those kind of people. These 0.1 percenters yeah. for GGG, not talking about money, but just in terms of community building and game growth, are... Very, very important. And if you care about sure. the longevity of the game, then this can also yeah. affect you. Not saying you should give a damn. I'm just giving you the perspective. But as I said, I'm in no way qualified to talk in depth about what's going on, the inner workings of TFT or anything well, like even that. Even if they're a 0.1%, they still, like, ideally, that they should have a good experience in the game. Like, they deserve to, to have things be fair for them. Like, that's not... Like, fuck, of course. It's not even a question. I am basically concerned with everything here that TFT provides that if went away tomorrow, if I get banned tomorrow, would go away for me as well and mm -hmm. for you as well if you type the wrong emote on their Discord. Now, next up, let's talk about bans. Yesterday, a lot of people have been banned. Prominent streamers, also a lot of people in their community. And this has wow. been known for a while, right? TFT is known for banning people for basically nothing or for personal insults or for posting something on another private discord to have their little spies right it, it's it's kind of crazy it's a big ego trip now as a streamer to an extent i can empathize with that right there's people who come into your chat they talk shit and you ban them and people are like why did you ban that guy he didn't say that bad thing and you're like well if that's his first message the vibe he's gonna bring in here is probably not gonna be good overall i totally well, get your your the thing is the difference is that a stream so it's like the difference between being able to leave a bad review on a product on Amazon versus being able to say something negative to a streamer. Like, I, I think that really, if somebody is like actually abusive, I don't think anybody has a problem banning that user. But the reality is that this website needs to exist for the betterment of the player base. It's not about any one user, for better or for worse. So whenever you're banning people and you're just inventing rules, like, of course, they have, I guess, like the right to do that because it's their Discord server. But ethically, do they really have the right to do that whenever they have such an important position in the community? Is this a misuse of power? I would argue that I think it is. I think it is a misuse of power. It's very problematic. That And then maybe they just had a bad day. They ask for an unban and you're like, sure, of course. 
But there is a difference here. If I ban somebody from my stream, they can still watch my stream. Also, nobody gives a f if they're banned. There is a hundred other streamers. But TFT True. is a website that is currently irreplaceable. And this is where, yes, this is a private Discord still. It's a private space. But as we've seen with, for example, social media websites where people are posting their thoughts and if they get banned, they do not have a voice. There are problems with this. Not yes, being able to participate right. in probably the biggest public space is a problem and should be a problem. And sure, you could say it's kind of unfair because they just kind of grew over time. And it's just a downside because now they're not really private anymore. But they also got so much influence. So people should care, yeah. even though it's a private Discord. This is not an argument. And against also, like, even if they're not allowed to do it, like being allowed to do it is one thing. Like, for example, I ban people in my stream, and some people say that I ban too easily. They say that I, I am too, I'm too ban happy. That's their right to say it. That They have that right to say it, and like, that's fair. Now, they can do their stream, and they can do what they want to do, but at the end of the day, like... I think it's totally fair for him to make a video or for me to talk about this or for cute dog to talk about this and say, hey, we disagree with what you're doing. It's not like it's illegal. I'm not trying to put somebody in jail for banning over a POE discord. I just think that this is bullshit and, and stop doing it. It sucks. Like not everything has to be enforced legally. It's like, bro, just fucking cut it out. I don't see why it's so complicated for, for some people. I got suspended once and it was fair. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm, and this is always really the truth is that I bet 95% of disciplinary actions that they take are probably fair. But a 5% fuck up rate is huge. Think about that. That's massive. Would you want a car that the brakes work 95% of the time? No this it should be managed properly and that is not happening right now there mm -hmm. is a lot of emotions running wild there's people having erratical behavior and that is not a good place to be in these corporate structures believe it or not you can talk about companies you can talk about discords and laugh it off right but this is a big influential thing inside this game and i think the main issue is besides personal qualms and people being assholes um it's just too big to handle. In order to handle this many people... This is a good point. I bet the mods are overwhelmed. I bet they are probably spending more time on this than a lot of you guys spend, at least mentally, on their job. Like, I, I think that's probably what happened. They're probably getting thousands of tickets a week. They're overwhelmed. They uh, are, like, constantly having people message them. And they're put into a position that, like, you know, a few nerds who made a trading website now have this massive position, and every action they take is being, you know, micro-analyzed by, you know, this guy, and then I'm watching it, and then my chat's seeing it, and they're talking about it. So it's like, yeah, I get it. I definitely get it. It makes sense. And on which Jannies, yeah, no, no, but I mean, like, I, I get that, like, everybody likes to make fun of Discord mods and, like, you know, they're fat and stupid, but I mean, again, I, I try to see things from the other person's perspective because if you can't, then you're not really trying to understand the problem. You're not really trying. You're just trying to laugh at them or shit on them. Uh, I mean, that so that that's my perspective, right? Is that like I can see I can see how they would get in this position for sure without f***ing up constantly. You need trained staff. You need people who can calmly assess situations Constant and put weapons? personal no, qualms aside. Like, this is not about is legality. Fine. This is about public use cases. Yeah, if yeah. untrained people hold too much power and start intimidating and well, dox... It, it's all, no, it, it's always a bad thing whenever you have... Like, giving people power without accountability is bad. Like, this is never, like, it, this is never a good thing. If somebody has power over something and there's no accountability, this is a, bad, it's a horrible thing. Untrained people hold too much power and start intimidating yeah. and doxing and hate rating that. people. That's crazy. That is a problem. This is a size that is so freakish that even if you're somebody is like, it's just pixels, you cannot ignore. Now, harassment and stuff like that aside, I don't think yeah. anybody has to get banned here per se. I think the most important thing is GGG implements changes 
that makes TFT less necessary. With size comes True. influence, and True. with influence comes responsibility. And if it's that responsibility take. is Absolutely. not taken seriously, then somebody has to intervene. And I don't think there has to be anything direct happening because yeah. I don't think GG should meddle in any of those things directly. However, no, they I do should change the game to where this is no longer needed. They should not try to micromanage Discord moderators. This is a recipe for disaster. And it will only end in pain. I think they should make their trade website better. <laughs> like, let's not be make honest, this as guys. Necessary. Now, we'll not be talking about any like magical Christmas land solutions that I know GG can never implement or yeah. doesn't want to implement or is too much work. I will just hone in on the most important things that could literally happen overnight. Before we even yeah. start, this is something that should be more pronounced to people. If you do group by seller, yes here, and you, for example, want a set of a certain item and you just want to buy from one person, you can search this and you will actually see people i mean i really have to go back and say it again this experiment this experience is horrible this is such a horrible experience to play like i know poe has its own unique texture and it's its own special game but holy fuck man trading currency is just not fun trading gear is actually super fun and i love it but I hate trading currency. It is so unfun. Posted multiple of these. So it's not as perfect as buying on TFT and buying sets, but it is something. And while that works for certain things, for others, it doesn't. Now, the biggest thing is probably compasses. PUE stack right now allows you to trade compasses. Uh -huh. However, it is reliable once again on TFT. I do not see why this cannot be stackable. I understand it has uses. Some things that have different uses. For example, this is a three, right? If you spec into a node on a passive three, it's a four. Uh, sorry, this one. Just make them stack independently. Like, for example, you do with incubators that have different item levels. Now, then we have beasts, which is probably the second biggest use that's case. That's a really and, good point. I mean, the yeah. biggest use case for crafters, for sure. Yellow beasts are And that's also a, another example of that that works. Uh, he's talking about incubators. Uh, there's also the uh, monster samples from Tain, and they're also uh, grouped by item level as well. Buy without TFT. It's not even about that's the red beasts. Red beasts are obviously hard to buy, but the yellow beasts are almost impossible mm -hmm. to an extent where you might as well just crack open some white maps. And I They're don't see why this tank? cannot be on the trading oh, okay. website. Now, a lot of people have told me, pal, this is not possible because of, I don't know, these have different mods. They're not stackable. Clearly, they have different mods. But then I would ask you, why does it work with maps, for example? Because when it comes to maps, Maps can also have different mods. And yeah. I can have rare maps here, unidentified maps, mirrored maps, and they're still all going to show up as the same. And I'm not a dev. I have nothing yeah. to do with this space. So maybe it is just impossible, and that's why. But I just cannot see why. After that, we have logbooks. Most people interact with logbooks in some capacity. Maybe they don't run them, I sell them. but they farm them. And while they won't be stackable, and it's definitely a little bit more C. complicated because they have different areas... Yeah. I don't think this is something you cannot fix. You can, for example, just make it search for areas like you do with maps. And sure, it's going to have another area and you can't exactly maybe search for this, but at least you could search for bulk. This is probably the hardest one to implement, though. Next up, contracts, blueprints, right? Blueprints have been <laughs> basically now... I've never sold these. Like, I never even have tried to sell a blueprint. Like, at the time that I get down into selling heist items, I know I'm down bad. It's like now, it's like, oh, fuck. You know, you go into the heist stash, it's like, oh. made I into one mush fuck. right yeah, everything no, i i know that's the worst part is that i've also made probably half of my currency in multiple leagues through heist i hate heist it has the same rewards so i don't see any problem why it couldn't be just thrown in as <laughs> blueprints you is. can do different areas but who cares right contracts the same thing i don't understand why i can't just buy 100 deception mm -hmm. but when it comes to betrayal we have ashling we have Richie, we have hillock and all of that stuff and I honestly can't see why this wouldn't just be itemized as sort of a currency at the end that's just in a chest like everything else. I guess you would have to make artwork for it and stuff like that. And That's a good point. Yeah, why couldn't you take the double corrupt feature from like, for example, the altar of sacrifice and turn it into an item? Because, yeah, they itemize the Temple of Alva, but you can't itemize the corruption mechanic. Yeah, the double corruption. That's what I'm talking about. Like, yeah, the tier three. Yeah, I, I don't see how they can't do that. It is a, I don't know, a process, but I mean, you were able to do fracturing orbs, right? We know that you care. We know that you can do it. And I think betrayal stuff will actually affect a lot more people than fracturing orbs. But yeah, either way, 
after that, we have the Hillock Infl Craft is the 28%, right? On Flask. It's maps. Right now, you can only search for Shaper maps because they have a unique layout. Yeah. So for some reason, that is possible. But then when we get to maps and so we're 30? looking at, for example, oh, 28. Elder maps, sure, they have different layouts, but I don't huh. understand why they cannot be grouped by influence by the Elder, for example. And I should put class. this in the same yeah, category I, I as, for example, Blight maps, know. because most people do not care what kind of layout you give them. Sure, there are strats where the influence map matters because you're just using them as more quant, basically, but it would still be very helpful to at least have the most basic search function. And I know this yeah. is work on their part, but I think this is the closest we can get to at least eliminate the most well, it, important... It, it's work that they should do because, like, having this trading website that creates all this animosity and problems for the players, this is something that reduces the experience that a player has in their game at the end of the day right this diminishes their player's experience and so they should work towards trying to fix this and improve it like why let people get scammed if you can create a system that subverts that entire issue absolutely that's a good idea important things for 99% of the people. And everything else that is more niche, like, I don't know, you want eight mod maps that have plus two proj and you want to buy them in bulk. I think there is useful cases for these kind of websites. Like there is always going to be a use case for niche stuff. But I think sure. once again, the problem with TFT is the size, the influence, yeah. the intimidation that is happening right now. How well, people the problem is that it's so big and its influence is so big that it affects the average player. If this was drama between people that are trying to fight over mirror items, I don't think it would really matter that much. But whenever it's a 500,000 player Discord that is a mainstay in the community, then that's totally different. Act differently just because they don't want to get banned on TFT. If we could just alleviate this, I think sites like TFT are fine. Personal squabbles aside, and I'm sure it started off at a good place. That is all okay. But at some point, it's just not scalable anymore. Putting these on the bulk trading website would reduce so much reliability on these third-party websites. Yeah, I cannot and you can't... The thing is also, like, like, think about it. Like, really, won't somebody think of the Discord moderators? These guys are probably working their ass off dealing with all the people. Like, I know what it's like to run a Discord server. Like, I, I deal with this. Like, it, it is fucking exhausting, the amount of people that are complaining. There are problems. There's something wrong. Oh, God. This guy called me a dick sucker in, in chat. And, like, then he deleted my message. It's like, oh, fuck. Like, and, and like, you know these guys are getting these DMs 24-7. Like, they're getting these messages all the time. This is, like, think about the, uh, the fucking... Uh, the burden that that is on these random guys like what the fuck and it's like yeah they signed up for this yeah yeah sure but they're not being paid and if they were being paid isn't that even worse think about it this is not a, this is not a system that they should want to be in either no but this is a situation where nobody wins see what is currently happening as a positive um i did not believe my eyes when i saw how many members there are currently last time i checked people which was years ago yes. obviously but it was sixty-seven thousand members or something it's just crazy and it's a problem if it it's is ran by system. people who Up are down. untrained once again it takes a lot to be able to moderate five hundred thousand people what an absurd absurd thing it's a massive a it's a massive responsibility it is tremendous and I know some of these guys are clowns, but you've got to keep in mind, these aren't professionals. These are just guys. And they're not PR trained. They're not employees. Like, you can't, you can't give people like that that level of authority and then expect things not to go wrong. Like really, like it, it, you, it, it's, it, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. They're clowns, yeah. But like, of course they're clowns. What's wrong with that? Well, no one's doing defending the system. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. But I mean, that that's just the way it is. I feel like, guys, I'm gonna be honest. I think most people would be a clown in their position. 
I don't think that people understand the amount of the deluge of just bullshit that comes with running a big Discord server. Like, my mods will send me their message DMs, and they'll have, like, 2,000 DMs from people. It's awful. Like, it, it, people messaging them, like, oh, I can't, I was banned unfairly, and, like, they're looking this up, cross-referencing it. And this is a moderator for a, a, a Twitch channel. It's my second channel, and they're dealing with this bullshit. This is crazy. You people should be able to do it. It's just not possible. And all the personal squabbles aside, this is something that will affect the whole community and mm -hmm. is already affecting the whole community for the last years, whether you know it or not. Um, it might affect you in the future. Now, I hope this video wasn't too drama for you. If you're on Twitch, if you're watching my stream or other people's streams, you will have heard these I ideas. I really don't think this is that big of a drama. Like, yeah, it's bad. This guy's a dumbass, right? Whatever. But like, really, this is just, I think this is a video that it's like a reality check for GGG. Hey, we have this problem with the way that your game is made. And like, this is how we're trying to solve the problem, but it's not working. So do something different. Like, it's really like, yeah, this guy's an idiot, like whatever, right? But like, if you get rid of him, there's going to be another idiot or not for a while and then there'll be an idiot after that or there's going to be accusations of idiots and it's just always going to be a problem just fix the problem he has a hundred thousand times i'm sorry for that but it just this has to drama. put out there also on youtube i think this is something just a very that needs criticism. to get some attention and um i just hope that over time you yeah, will realize so. that the trading experience is very important and is something that makes Pee very unique. It is a integral part of the game and they have been constantly mm -hmm. doing small updates, but you can't just close your eyes to the bigger problems. You have to actually adjust some of this and not just yeah. copy Pee.trade from seven years ago. But yeah, rant over, peace. This is a great video. I, I really think this guy's making a lot of really good points and uh, I'm gonna be honest, like I, I, I think that this entire thing is, is very accurate. And I also think that there's too much of a focus here on, like, this Jenabu guy. Who gives a fuck about this guy? He's a clown? Who cares? Like, Jenabu is... Like, if you have a factory that makes cookies, and a cookie comes out of that factory, are you going to get mad that it's a cookie? No, you're going to get mad that it's a factory that makes cookies. And this is a factory that makes people like Jenabu. It, it, it creates people like this. So, yeah, sure, you can get mad at this guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. And maybe he's a fucking idiot. But that doesn't solve the problem. Am I crazy? Like, I really... He's a symptom of the problem. Yes. Like, so getting mad at him and kicking him off of the Discord doesn't solve the problem of people needing the discord in the first place he's literally has a stranglehold on the entire mirror any market etc the guy is too powerful i mean again but why does he have a market on those things he has a market on those things because other people number one allow him to and number two the game funnels everybody into his discord because the game's trading system hasn't caught up with the player trading habits that's the truth. That's why it happened. Is of RMT? Oh yeah, there's RMT as well. And GGG should absolutely investigate that. Remove mirrors? That's an interesting idea. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I think it's something they should experiment with in PoE2. PoE streamers should make a new version of TFT or GGG should overtake it and then even make it five ways possible on the trading site. I think that the PoE community and streamers should not make a new Discord because eventually it will cut the same problems will happen. I, I think the same problems will happen and it will just take longer and people will accuse like every league Empyrean gets accused of RMT. So what happens whenever Empyrean is one of the moderators on this Discord? Like it will just happen again. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. So I think that the problem is fundamental with the design of the game. And the change can only come from grinding your games. They, can, they are the only ones who can solve this. The players can't solve this. This is a great breakdown of the video. I, I honestly think this is amazing. Uh, I haven't watched Palsteron's videos before. 
And so uh, this is my first one, and uh, this this was great. Just a guy in his room talking about a game. Imagine that. There it is. There's a video. Make sure to give it a like. No, they won't. No, I think that they will. Uh, I, I do. Remember they said they weren't going to make a trading website? Then they did. No, I, I, I think they will. So this salt is you going to talk to us about grant, to Granny Grams about this? Yeah. I just hope that they understand where the root of the problem is. I don't want to see these Discord moderators being told what to do. I just want to see them change the game. That's that's my uh, that's my perspective on it. That's what I think. Can you guys see kind of like what my point is with a lot of this? How like this drama is a symptom and not the disease. The disease is the system. The drama is the symptom. Like that's what I think it is. And so like these guys and I, I get where they're coming from, right? You're dealing with thousands of people every day. <laughs> they're not people people, you know, they're Discord moderators. They're going to fuck it up. And it's like, you can say, well, then they shouldn't be Discord, but you can, you like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they are, though. Like, that's reality. I'm not talking about shoulds. Oh, should, should, should. Who gives a fuck about shoulds? Oh, God.